Hello, my name is Steven Mayu, and this is my video series on Practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. In this video, we will tackle the DNA pairing challenge. I believe that's uh, challenge number seven or eight in the intermediate section, and uh, we're going to do some more work with objects. So uh, let's get down into it. The DNA strand is missing the pairing element. Take each character get its pair, and return the results as a two-dimensional array. Okay, so a 2D array, as you recall, is an array inside of an array. So you're going to have multiple sub-arrays inside of one you know, larger array. We have to return that. Base pairs are a pair of AT and CG. Match the missing element to the provided character. Return the provided character <clears throat> as the first element in each array. For example, for the input GCG, <clears throat> return this uh, 2D array. So you have the first subarray and it's GC, and then the second subarray is CG, and then the third and final subarray is GC again. The character and its pair are paired up in an array, and all the arrays are grouped into one encapsulating array. So we have one array with many subarrays, and within those subarrays, we have the DNA pairs. So um, uh, if you take a look at the, <coughs> if you take a look at uh, one of the examples, we have A T C G A. So A and T are pairs, and C and G are pairs. So that's all that you have to remember. So the first subarray. Okay, A, T, because the first letter is A. And then the second subarray is T, A, because the second letter begins with T. And then the third subarray is C, G, because the third letter is C, and so on. So with that in mind, uh, we understand the instructions. We look through one of the examples. So let's get started. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As usual, I've created a new JavaScript file. I'm calling this one 7 DNA pairing.js. <coughs> oh goodness, this this dusty, dusty dust, this dusty air is making me cough. Um, and I've gone ahead and I uh, embedded that in the HTML, HTML file as I normally do right there on line 11. Um, and let's get started. So first thing I want to do, uh, I want to create an object literal for all of the pairs, all of the DNA uh, pairings that, that we're going to use. Um, and I've shown this to you, I believe, in the Roman numerals uh, challenge, so we're going to have another look at it right now. So let's create a new variable, var pairs, and we're going to create an object literal. So instead of the um, square braces, we're going to use the curly braces. And uh, the key is going to be A, and we need a colon. And its value is going to be a string with a single character, capital T. All right, and then I'm going to do this again. The key, the next key is T, and its value is capital A. Okay, uh, next one is going to be C. The key is C, and its value is G. And then vice versa, the key is now G, and its value is C. So uh, remember, when you're working with objects, um, all the key value pairs, they have to be separated by a uh, comma. You don't need a comma for the, after the last one. And uh, this is a variable, so be sure to put a semicolon um, at, right after the last curly brace. OK, so we have our object literal of all the DNA pairing elements. Um, I want to take this string now. And um, I want to split it up and make it into an array. And uh, remember, I need to return a, a two-dimensional array. So it's many of those subarrays in one encapsulating array. So um, anytime we're going to take one array and mutate it and change it, that sounds like a good candidate for the map method. So we're going to use map in order to uh, do this. Okay. So return string str split. All right, remember we're, we're taking this string and we're splitting it up into an array. And now we're going to use our map function. Okay, remember the map function, it takes an anonymous argument 
um, a, a, an anonymous function rather as its argument and that anonymous function can take up to three arguments um, but it only needs one required one um, okay we'll call that item you can call it anything that you want okay and uh, remember in, in order to return in order to create like this new array we gotta you know give it something so we're going to return um, we are inside of an anonymous function after all so we need a return statement and I'm gonna put this um, these square brackets right here and I'm gonna return the item okay so the item would be each individual each individual um, string or character right here so and then the next thing is going to be pairs item okay so for example we have this um, this uh, letter G right here okay and uh, so item is G and then pairs item okay pairs G so we go up to the pairs object literal and inside the square bracket is the um, is the item so that would be the key so we find the pairs um, key value pair uh, we want the key of G so there it is and it, this is how we access the value so we tell it to uh, access the value of, uh, of, of, of the pair with, um, with the key of G. So that's gonna give us the letter C. And we're returning this as, guess what? As an array, because we're encapsulating it in uh, the square brackets. So this is gonna return a little subarray in each of our, um, it, it, for, for each letter of, of the string. Okay, and it's it's going to be uh, multiple subarrays encapsulated by one big array. So if I save this, if I go to my example.html file and refresh it, okay, there we have it. We see we see that uh, we have an array of subarrays, and if I look at the first one, okay, there we have it, GC. If I look at the second one, I get CG. If I look at the third one, I'll get GC again, which is exactly what I want. Whoops. Let me go here, copy and paste it. Let me put it into free code camp. Let me see if I pass that test. I think I should. Run it. Storm that castle. All right, pretty cool. So, so again, let's just uh, review this code one more time because I have a lot of uh, time remaining. I created an object literal called pairs and uh, each key, okay, we have four keys, so A, T, C, G. Each key has a value and that value is the corresponding DNA element that, that pairs up. So A always pairs up with T and T always pairs up with A. The same applies to C and G. So we're taking our string and we're splitting it up into an array and we have to return a new array. So that's why we use the map function. And, uh, and we return whatever we want to add to that new function that's created by map. So I want a bunch of subarrays in, uh, in this big encapsulating array. So that's why I'm putting um, these two uh, these two values right here, these two variables, that's why I'm putting it in the square brackets. And the, the first item is going to be, um, the first element in the subarray is going to be whatever the character is in the, in the string. Okay, we're calling that item. And then the second um, element in this subarray is going to be its corresponding uh, DNA element. And I'm accessing that using bracket notation. Um, we can access the values uh, of, of an array, uh, or I'm sorry, we can access the values of an object using dot or bracket notation. Um, in this case, I have to use bracket notation. Um, 
if I did dot notation like this, it, it's not going to work, okay? Because there is no key in this object called item. So this would not work. You know, I can save it um, and, uh, oops, I can save it and, uh, it, you know, I'm going to get some sort of error. So if I try running it, yeah, I get null because there's no key in this object um, with, uh, with uh, uh, that, that's called item. So anytime that we want to um, do some sort of expression, okay, we need to use a bracket notation. And if I, no, why did I do that? If I run it again, okay, it works. So it's accessing the value of the corresponding item. And so that's how we access the values. In this case, we need to use bracket notation instead of dot because there is no item key. Okay, uh, so this was um, uh, this was much shorter than the uh, than the previous challenge, um, but just because it's short doesn't mean that it's easy or necessarily uh, simple to do. It's still quite complicated, um, but uh, that that is the most elegant solution that I can come up with. All right, enough rambling on. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement, I would love to hear from you. So please uh, reach out to me by putting those thoughts in the comments below. I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, please subscribe, like, share this video. Uh, it helps me out. It'll help you out. And it'll help out the people at freecodecamp.com. Um, and I would love to hear from you. So let me know how I'm doing. And, um, and if you have any questions, yeah. Honestly, let me know, and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Okay, that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Boop.